X-Men Apocalypse, the review. You know, they say that the third movie of a trilogy is always the worst, but that doesn't mean that the movie is necessarily bad. But there is truth in that when it comes to X-Men Apocalypse. I do think that it's the worst one out of the trilogy in dealing with the past. But before I say that it's a bad movie, and it really isn't, despite what other critics might say, there's a lot of great things about it that makes it entertaining. The most important part about th this movie that I think makes it good is that it brings X-Men Days of Future Past and First Class and this latest trilogy, it makes it all come full circle, especially with altering the timeline in the last movie, which led to the horrible X-Men 3 being fixed. So each of these movies has been set in a different decade. First Class had was in the 60s, Days of Future Past was in the 70s, and now we have the 80s. And it's been about 10 years since we've last seen the characters. Um, all on different paths, but now that now that there is a, there is actually a, a ex Xavier School for the Gifted, uh, where Professor Xavier is actually training X Men and having and does have a school for mutants. One of the great things about this movie is we do get to see a very young Jean Grey and Scott Summers. And when it comes to casting, I have to hand it to the producers that they did a very good job. Uh, Sophie Turner was, is a very good younger uh, Jean Grey. And Tyler Sheridan, who some might have thought it, he was kind of a surprise, actually did really well as a teenage Scott Summers, and you can definitely see the similarities between him um, and James Martin, who played the older version. Now, <clears throat> introducing Apocalypse as a villain. Uh, for those of you that have actually read the Apocalypse uh, comic books about, you know, the so-called first mutant who is a god who wants to reshape uh, the Earth, that, that's basically the plot line. And Apocalypse is, pay, is played by none other than Oscar Isaac, so who does actually make a very good villain. Uh, he's got great acting chops, and it definitely shows in this movie. I don't think that X-Men Apocalypse is a perfect movie. Not by any means. Um, Olivia Munn's character was very underutilized. She pretty much just looked good on screen and killed people. And you could have done so much with her character. So that is a very big disappointment. <clears throat> there, It doesn't always work well when you try to show the softer side of Eric Lencher. And then automatically he is so influenced by Apocalypse that he's going to become one of his henchmen. And it you know, takes his friend Charles yet again, or uh, Raven, to, to get through to him. I didn't find it as believable, even though they are trying to show a very emotional uh, Eric, and this is a spoiler, after killing his wife and daughter, and he's been living under an assumed name in Germany. Um, after that happens, I can understand how a character would go into a fit of rage but it's just like it was just like Anakin Skywalker in episode three. The it was too much of a quick descent to this dark side where you're just willing to betray everybody. And then all of a sudden, hey, I'm OK. I'm back to being friends with my with Charles Xavier. And it, it just wasn't fleshed out very well. So that is one of my major complaints. However, it, you know. Michael Fassbender playing Magneto, he is still good. And, you know, it was great to see him on screen. But really, the, the, the people that take center stage in this movie, besides Apocalypse, is the younger X-Men that we will come to know, you know, with Gene and Scott and, and Storm. And that was another thing. Um, you know, we're supposed to look at Storm when she was younger as easily manipulated 
And maybe that's the case when you're a teenager. I don't know. But I just didn't, I didn't find it as believable. And the young actress who was uh, playing the younger version, she might be a good actress and other things, just didn't really deliver to me. And, and, and maybe that's just because, you know, you're under a shadow when it comes to Holly Berry, who does play a very, you know, great storm. Um, this movie is filled with a lot of action. Uh, it's a lot of fun. There is a lot of, uh, you know, good comedy to it, including a very funny line about the third movie of a trilogy being the worst. Um, but again, I think the two bright shining spots of this movie is Tyler Sheridan and Sophie Turner as a younger, uh, you know, Gene and, um, Cyclops or Scott Summers. Um, and it was great to see everybody kind of, you know, come back. But again, this movie, uh, the best part about it is how it does bring everything full circle and how it introduces introduces these characters to becoming X-Men, you know. Uh, you know, we get to see Scott the first time that he goes to the school. And we see that Jean is the weird one that everybody's afraid of because he, she, she is such a powerful m- mutant. Um they do have good chemistry and and definitely definitely do a good job of, of showing those younger versions of the of the, of these beloved characters. Uh, it was also uh, great to see it come full circle with a, a little short scene involving how uh, Wolverine fits into this particular time period and what happens to him finally going off with no memory. Uh, and again, we get Stryker uh, yet again, who is out to basically kill and tame every mutant. Um, as for looking at this movie compared to the others, yes, it is the worst one. But that doesn't mean it's bad. I do give this a good solid 8 out of 10. Okay, It is a movie that's worth going to the theaters and seeing. Um, Oscar Isaac played a very good apocalypse. Um, is this a great movie? No. Uh, Days of Future Past, I think, is definitely the best one of this trilogy. And I am talking about the Rogue Cut. Uh, because you do get the two timelines and you bring everybody together. And the thing that's really missing from this one, of course, is, uh... You know, the older uh, Patrick Stewart and Ian McKellen playing an older Magneto and Charles Xavier. Um, and that's that's what having them in Days of Future Past really just made it great. So, you know, I do like this storyline. Uh, it's a great way to kind of bring everything, uh, you know, complete the circle. Um, I don't know whether they're going to have another X-Men movie. They probably shouldn't. I think you've brought everything enough. To where, um, you know, again, coming full circle. But this, but if you are an X-Men fan, um, while you might be a little disappointed in certain things in this film, it's still very much a fun film to see and worth going to the theater to see. So that's my review. It's an 8 out of 10.